So my first question to you is, so you are supremely confident of forming the government in Haryana? The state is going to polls as we speak and by all indications, um, our party's campaign, our selection of candidates, our strategy, our manifesto, our guarantees, uh, I think the feedback I've gotten is that uh, the 10 years of the BJP government in, in the state, uh, people want a big change and uh, the momentum is with us. We had a very good campaign, we had a positive campaign and uh, I'm quite confident that the change will happen because people of India have seen the central government's performance for the last 10 years and in Haryana. So I think people have made up their mind by and large uh, to change the government and Congress is a party that has always uh, stood with the people whether we in the opposition or in the government. So I'm in quite confident. In terms of state, what is the upper band and what is the lower band for you? Well, it's difficult to say lower upper band but I can tell you with the comfortable and a large majority, it's a 90 member house. So I'm of the opinion that we may get more seats than we have perhaps never gotten before. Uh, because increasingly that election… Are you talking about something around between 65 to 70? I won't take numbers but I'll say very comfortable majority. I won't be surprised if we get a two-third majority. Why Modi band is not working? Modi brand is not working in uh, Haryana? Not just Haryana. It, I think it hasn't worked in most places. Uh, if you look at the results of the last Lok Sabha elections, this was really a, a watershed election because when the BJP went to polls, they had 303 MPs and the target they set for themselves was 400. Now, despite doing everything they could, they managed 240. So the brand is getting diluted is one thing. But I think within the organization, there are many challenges uh, for many reasons. But by and large, the, the governance for last 10 years has not inspired anyone to add on to the vote share. So the BJP is on a decline nationally. Uh, you see it in the northern states where traditionally, uh, Mirnalji, on a one-to-one -one fight, BJP always had an edge. In North India, this time in Haryana, out of 10 seats, Congress party won 5. In Rajasthan, there are 25 seats, we won 11. UP, of course, uh, was half-half. Uh, so I think everywhere, including the North, the BJP is losing its traction. And the BJP always fights elections with the Prime Minister's face. So when you win, he gets the credit. But when you lose, someone has to take responsibility. So you want to say that that Modi brand is faltering all over North India? I don't really care so much about any individual brand. I care about my country. So India should progress. We should get, you know, our GDP numbers right. They should look at the, the biggest worry I feel now is the widening gap between the rich and the poor, right? It's a huge problem for us. Unemployment is, is historic uh, in numbers. There's a farmer's distress. What's bothering me is that the country is being run by a government, which is the coalition government, and the only focus is to sort of defame and and squash the voice of the opposition and that dictatorial attitude uh, is not going on very well with the people of India. So to answer your question in short, yes, uh, the BJP itself, the NDA government and the Prime Minister, all those brands, they're losing the equity. Are you, the Congress, showing a little bit of overconfidence in these last hundred days? What is under, we have accepted the mandate, we have been asked to be in the opposition, uh, Mr. Gandhi is now leader of opposition. There are 234 MPs of the India Alliance in the opposition. We are making the government accountable, asking the right questions, making the government of India responsible for its actions. And earlier you saw last Lok Sabha, 147 members of parliament were suspended in one day. Now that sort of attitude cannot go on. So a robust, strong, and a committed opposition is very important for our republic. And I think Mr. Gandhi is leading from the front. The Congress party, not at all. Forget overconfidence. We have accepted the humility, the fact that we've been voted to sit in the opposition. But look at our numbers. We've doubled our numbers. BJP has lost 70 MPs. We've gained 50. We have a national alliance. India Alliance is standing together. Despite all attempts to break the alliance, we've stood together. And opposition unity, I think, is, is something that they have to reckon with. So we are saying that you run the government, but please, it cannot be a blank check to do as you wish, to misuse agencies, to suppress the voice of the opposition, to put chief ministers in jail. All of that will not be acceptable and you have to be answerable to the people of India and within parliament. Both you and Mr. Gandhi can be leveled as a dynast. How will you counter that and how will you come out of that? I, you see, this labeling is a very nice thing that people do all the time. The ultimate label that you get is whether people like you or not. 
simple as that. And the pure test of that is not a studio or an editor or a, or a journalist, it's the people of India. When Mr. Rahul Gandhi walked four and a half thousand kilometers from Kanyakumari to Kashmir, non-stop, six months, he walked because he felt, and we all felt, that the country is facing a problem. There is acrimony, there is anger, there is distrust, there is animosity, there is suspicion, there is fear, there is tyranny. And to quell all of that, India is a country that's made up of all religions, all communities, all languages, all ethnicities, and that's what makes our country beautiful. There was a challenge to that firm ethos of what we believed was a real, secular, flourishing India. And he took that yatra to unite people, not to seek votes. But that yatra endeared him to the people of India, and of course the Congress party benefited from that. The problem with some of our friends is that the word dynast, it's used a dynast when you talk about the opposition of the Congress. In the BJP or in the NDA, nobody's a dynast. No, no, no. Example of 16 of them, right? No, no. Dada, wahan to, the question is whether you're biological or non-biological. That's <laughs> another question. But if you're biological, even if your father, grandfather, great-grandfather are politicians, you will not be dynast. The minute you are in the Congress party, you're dynast, you're corrupt, you're... And minute you switch from uh, any other party to BJP, all labels are taken off. Now, people of India are watching this very carefully. You know, you have to be clear of what you want. I can name 50 people in the BJP whose families are in politics. My simple point is that if you're in public life for 10, 20, 30 years, you go to the people, you win their confidence, you win elections, people's mandate is with you, then whether you're from a dynastic family or a political family is irrelevant. You have to prove to the people, and unless you work and perform, in today's day and age, uh, no one really cares whose nephew, whose niece, whose granddaughter you are. If you don't perform, you will get voted out. Okay, uh, accepted. And our next question is, has Congress revived enough to take on the BJP? Well, there are many states in which the Congress party has come back. Telangana, for example, we are out for a long time and now we have a government there. Uh, in Haryana, hopefully, we'll have a government after the 8th of October. Uh, in many states, Maharashtra again, uh, Congress alliance is very strong. Jammu Kashmir, again, we think our alliance will win the elections. So slowly and very important for us is that we have to win state elections. Uh, state elections gives us that grassroots strength to take on the BJP nationally. Uh, with all humility, I must say that the Congress party is now much more spirited. People now see Congress as, a, as the most viable option to the current government. And, uh, but we are committed to having the unity of opposition leaders together. India Alliance stands united and strong. So we are working with our partners, with our coalition partners, India Alliance partners, uh, just to question and challenge the BJP and the government of India when they do what I feel is something wrong. They've had three bills in parliament that they introduced, but had to withdraw. The lateral entry for IS officers, the Waqf billboard, all of them, last Lok Sabha, they wouldn't do it because they were bulldozing their way through. This new parliament, the configuration is such that the mandate is only to run a coalition government. So they can't you know, push through the agenda without discussion or debate. So we are forcing that to happen. The Congress party needs to revive itself in many other states um, in, in North India. And there are some states where we've been traditionally weak for the last 20, 25 years. We're working towards that. Is Rahul Gandhi the next prime minister of India? Well, ultimately, who will be prime minister is decided by the people of India. But yes, uh, from the last 20 years and the fact that he is now in the last 100, year, 100 days as leader of opposition, has really taken the government to task. And it's not me. The people of India feel that here is someone who has faced enormous adversity. You have been accused, abused, challenged, maligned, uh, character assassination, media attacks, political attacks, uh, ED, all sort of cases, and yet he has resiliently stood for what he, what he stands for today. He has not changed his stand at all. I think people of India have a lot of faith in what Mr. Gandhi is doing and will do. And if you ask me personally, yes, I see him in the next round of elections uh, leading the country. Our Chief Minister, Sam Chief Minister, the Himant, our Chief Minister, Himant huh. Bishwas Sharma, has a very, has a very has a good love for him and is well-known love for him. And he recently said in Jharkhand, I quote, and I had uh, twice had seen this visual, and in Adverbati, I had written this line. He said, Rahul Gandhi is still a baby who think he is a phantom, the comic wala and he should continue to stay at home and watch cartoon movie. You know, I think what the Chief Minister of Assam is doing, by saying all these uh, uh, things about Mr. Gandhi, 
he's actually lowering his credibility because even though he's ex-Congress, now he's in the BJP, he's formed a government in Assam. But these personal vile attacks really have no political dividend. It is just to keep the leaders in Delhi, BJP leaders happy about attacking Mr. Gandhi or the Gandhi family or calling them names. You know, let the people be the judge of that. And uh, I will only say this much that if you're holding an important position, it's important to, to be cautious of what words you use, the language you use. As a politician, you will win, you will lose. But dignity of discourse, respect for the opposition, uh, you know, having a, a debate, a, a discussion, a, a deliberation is important. Name calling, anybody can do. You think the Congress party, all of us can't call names, but we have a certain respect for all politicians, but it's unbecoming of people sitting in high positions to use such language. Uh, I think it's, it's done to please the leaders of BJP in Delhi, uh, not so much. So I will just say that one should avoid making comments which are derogatory, which are unparliamentarian, and young people of India are watching what we say. Today with social media, internet, everything you say, every word you utter is being viewed and judged. So let the people of Assam judge whether that comment is, is becoming a, a, of, a, of a chief minister or not. Rahul Gandhi and Congress is giving a very clean image of late, uh, especially Rahul Gandhi. But I have a two question in that why he is silent on the matter. One is first is about uh, Karnataka. Karnataka chief minister Siddharamaya's involvement in the Mysore urban development Muda scam controversy is about 4,000 crores of less exchanging land between their own families and reselling it and or getting the compensation. But Mr. Gandhi till probably Yesterday, till I had checked, he had not spoken anything on that. Why? The Chief Minister of Karnataka has himself clarified he's open for any investigation. But might I just ask you? No, how can it be open I'll, for investigation? Is. You, you, you know, the brother of the wife of Chief Minister handed over a property, then it got uh, sold to Muda, had a compensation of 4,000 crores. Galti kal lo uske bar, nee, kal aap mereko batao, sitting as a journalist, you are the lawyer and the judge and you're passing That's verdict. No. Let me answer your question. Yes. You're talking about Karnataka? Yes. No, give me the answer. I am Karnataka. asking about Karnataka, right? You said the Chief Minister of Karnataka is allegedly involved in this scam. Yes. I am saying the same state, Karnataka, had an ex-Chief Minister Yadurappa. He was in jail, convicted. Has the BJP said anything about him? That you can, you can throw allegations. not say anything on him. Sir, you can throw allegations. No, you cannot compare Rahul Gandhi with the BJP now. I'm answering a question. You can throw allegations against one chief minister. Let the inquiry take place. Let him, if they said fault, we'll take action. But the fact is, is because he's a chief minister, you want to send ED, you want to file cases, you want to destabilize the government. You broke the government last time. By using these things, what is happening is people are losing confidence in what the media says and what the BJP says. You can't have two sets of rules. For Yadurappa, he's a clean man, even though he spent time in jail. And he's sitting chief minister, he's saying I'm open for inquiry, you check if I've done something wrong, but you want to create a narrative, no, no, Siddharamaya has done something criminal, so he has to uh, resign, leave the government. Whether he will resign, not resign, that's a party decision. And there's a court of law. But it can't be a media trial, it can't be a BJP trial. This country works on constitution and law of land. You, what you're alleging, sitting here in your chair, is as if you know all the files, you've seen all the documents, you're saying 5,000 crores, 10,000 crores, who are you and I to say it? That's what let my job is. That's my job is to ask questions to that. Let the investigation happen, no? And why is why is everyone quiet on the... Even on, Rahul Gandhi has not said anything is, on why, that also. Why are you not talking about Yerudrappa? Who's having cases against him? Who's been in jail? Same Karnataka, same chief minister. That's the bias I'm talking about. Because you want to catch something, it suits the narrative, you make some allegation, four months later people forget about it. You have put two chief ministers in jail. What has happened? Court has given bail. So government of India and some friends want to make controversies, get highlights, and then you want to defame the person, do character assassination, and then you forget about it. Second it's example. It's very easy, sir. let me tell you. It's very easy to allege. If someone has done something wrong, I am the last one to defend him or her. But it is absolutely incorrect to take an allegation and make it look like a verdict and assume that that person is guilty because it suits your political narrative. And if the law of the land is same for everybody, why is the ED not attacking a single BJP leader in the last 10 years? You're telling me the entire country, no BJP leader of any shape or size has ever done anything wrong. That's the funniest thing. ED is always allowed for the opposition. Who? No, this BJP government has always used ED against the opposition only. Say it one more time. Yeah. Say it one more time. So everybody can Abhi hear it. Singh said it. We are saying on that every day. Recently, Congress had backtracked. Well, good, good decision. Backtracked the owner's name display policy. Yes. 
He might still have that, and, uh, and High Command Rahul Gandhi had probably had spoken to him at the back track. My question is why it has come to that kind of a thing that somebody, a government, the PWD minister, okay, the eventually ministry minister said, no, we had not taken decision, but the PWD minister of the Himachal Pradesh government said that, Sabka naam or rehna parengi dukan me. That exactly what Yogi Adityan was trying to do. So, intention kya aisa hota hai ka dono andari andar eki hai kahani? Just because you so, and your policy was good, you I, could backtrack it. You speak very fast. Sometimes I'm not. Uh, yes, no questions. problems. <laughs> anyway, I know what you're trying to ask me about Vikramaditya and a statement in Himachal about those. So, I think that, that could have been avoided, but he has clarified his position. The AICC has clarified their position, and more importantly, government of Himachal has clarified their position. There is absolutely no nothing to compare. That one statement that he made, he has clarified his stand and he's corrected what he had said. Again. Could have been avoided, was not required to be done, but he did that. There was a course correction, party clarified, government clarified, and the matter rests there. The, this question is about uh, your uh, internal matters of the Congress. Do you think that, like Rahul Gandhi, the Congress leadership also should go to the younger generation? And that also includes you. So now I think because this question has been asked for 20 years, we are no longer the young, younger generation. We are the middle <laughs> age now. <laughs> there is a generation younger than us who has now become MPs and MLAs. And that's the cycle of life. You know, you can't fight time. You have to accept the changes and uh, the outcomes that life throws at you. And I've always championed this, that India is a relatively young nation. We must give leadership positions to people of, of a younger generation because I think the wavelengths and the connect <coughs> happens much more. And to empower young people, it's not about appointing a young person to a position of power. It's giving political power so that your thoughts, your ideation can actually reflect on files and policies, right? And I've always done that, whether it's Rajasthan or wherever else I've been asked to work. I always promote younger people. I was lucky enough to become member of parliament at the age of 26. Now, for 21 years, I have been in public life, and I believe that if I am not helping other young people to come forward, then I'm not doing justice to the chance that I got at a young age. If I've come in and I want to block my, the, the way for all other younger people, that's not the way it should be, right? And, and I, what I do usually is that if I find a young person who's interested in politics, for example, I will tell that person, him or her, that look, this is what I did right, my experiences in government, in party politics, and you know, whatever I've learned, and this is what I think you should avoid. So that guidance and that hand-holding and sharing of experience is important, and that's called nurturing. Unless we nurture the next generation, and today, when you say young people, Someone who's 20, 21 years old is far sharper than you and me. You know, exposure is so much. So I think we have to promote, and Mr. Gandhi has always done that, I think. And more than him, I think Mrs. Sonia Gandhi, she actually, 2004, uh, 21 years ago, then started pushing younger people to the front lines of the Congress uh, party politics. And that's why someone like me got a chance to contest elections at 26. I became MP, I became minister very young age, I was party president. So I've had a lot of good options and platforms to perform in, but it's my job to carry the torch and make sure that people who are younger than me also get the same advantages. The natural uh, follow-up question is a personal level. You had, as I told you, 20, 21 rallies in Haryana probably, maybe more. Now you are going to Nyayajatra in Chhattisgarh. Is this a clear signal of your move towards a larger role in national politics? So I have been in Government of India when I was living in Delhi that time and I was working around the country. I was member of parliament for 10 years, but then I moved to Rajasthan in 2013 when I became party president and I worked there and I'm still working there. I've been MLA. So depending on what the role and assignments I get as a party worker, I will do that. Whether it's campaigning in Assam or Tamil Nadu or Jammu, uh, it's a requirement of the party and I'm more than happy to do it. Uh, and I've never shied away from working hard and, and, and campaigning for the party, doing political work for the party. Um, but majority of my concentration and my work remains in Rajasthan. Next is that, uh, let's talk about something on BJP versus Congress. The BJP frames Congress as an anti-Hindu political party. How will you reclaim the secular narrative without losing the Hindu votes? So I think this whole discussion has now become jaded. This whole anti-Hindu, pro-Sanatan, this, that, the other. I mean, I want to talk about jobs, farmers distress, young people, inflation, the middle classes are getting uh, the burden of failure of economic policies. This whole debate about who is a better Hindu, who is less of a Hindu, who are you, me, or any party to give that certificate? Religion is a matter of home and heart. 
who you pray to, what you eat, what you wear, is your personal decision. And the constitution provides for that. As politicians, as political workers, as, as political parties, our job is to govern, is to fight elections, is to be with the people, empathize, understand the issues and make policies. Now this religion has entered into our debate uh, in the last decade or so, and it hasn't done good service for the country. You can be a, see, you can be a good Hindu or a good Hindu Muslim, bad Hindu. Ultimately, you have to be a good citizen. If you're a good person, that's all that matters. But this uh, whole uh, narrative about uh, BJP is a pro-Hindu and so and so non-Hindu, I think that people have discarded that notion. If that was the case, why would the BJP lose the seat of Ayodhya? Yes. Where apparently the BJP helped make that temple, even though the temple is made by the trust and sanctioned by the Supreme Court of India. It is not the BJP or the government of India. It is a seven judge bench member judgment of Supreme Court. And then the trust made that temper, which you all welcome because it's a court judgment. Ultimately, the final word in this country is Supreme Court. Supreme Court says this is what the verdict is. We all agree with, with, with no qualms about it. But to take credit, to politicize it, to keep opposition out, to make it a BJP affair, what is the result? Samajwadi party won that election. What does that tell you? That this whole Hindu-Muslim debate, this Mandir Masjid debate, will go up to a point and no further. Ultimately, people of India want a good government. They want a strong opposition. They want delivery. They want performance. They want better future for their kids. They want to live in safety. They want to have low inflation. They want a farmer should be happy. That's what a job should be. Not to put social media posts about how I made this temple, how I broke that bulldozer and I did this. All these tactics ultimately will not yield dividend. People are smarter than we give them credit for. And you can fool people some people a few of the times. Some people you can fool sometimes. You can't fool everybody all the time. That's probably the reason Haryana BJP is not doing so bad, uh, not well. You're doing so well. Well, we know the results on the 8th, but I'm saying it's a reflection of the kind of politics BJP has practiced. If they were focused, they got a full mandate. Two elections, 10 years, long time. 10 years is long enough to change the face of a country. You know, Dr. Manmohan Singh, I'm going to just recall him for one minute. And he, as Prime Minister, really lifted 14 crore people out of abject poverty. He made our country grow at a 7-8% GDP growth. He made sure that we have international deals, nuclear deals. He gave some a direction to the country. What this government has done is all these slogans, Stand Up India, Digital India, Fit India, Yoga India, Make in India, 15 slogans in 11 years. Delivery on the ground is very, very scarce very, very spotty. So what is happening is now there's rhetoric, there's advertisements, there's media management, there's publicity, there's television, WhatsApp, hoardings, banners, but on the ground people are hurting. When you're being so uh, discompassionate towards people, farmers had to sit for one and a half years before the three farmers bill could be withdrawn. Our young wrestler girls were sitting in Delhi on a dharna protesting against exploitation. What did the government of India do? Nothing. A UP minister, his son was accused of killing some people on a, in a car. What happened? They did nothing. So you can't have two standards of operation. One. Second, if you are actually delivered and you've performed on all the, you know, uh, the matrix that you're supposed to, you will get elected. Why is it that BJP from 303 came down to 240? I'm not saying that Congress party has got a government, but I'm saying that we were able to tell the people that today there is an attempt to tinker with the constitutional provision for the Dalits, for the tribals. Okay, one more question. When Dr. Manmohan Singh was Prime Minister for 10 years, did, did he ever have to clarify that I will not change the constitution, I will not change with the SCST reservations? He never had to clarify. Why is it today that the top leadership of the BJP has to clarify every time, we will not touch the constitution, we will not change the reservation? Why is that? It's because people have understood that you want char so par for a reason. And their own people are saying things like, you know, uh, let's alter the constitution, let's make amendments to it. That is why to defend the ethos and what our constitution stands for. See, our country is bigger than one party, one leader, and one government. We owe it to 1.4 billion people that we will remain true to what we stand for. You can't change the fundamental rules of engagement because you have a majority in parliament. That's not the way it should be. BJP controls the media to a great extent and key institutions. How does Congress plan to fight this quid 
and Burman at this moment. Almost all the political institutions, you said. Yeah, like from ED to CBI to media, everything they had tried. Universities, you can go on, you can name it. You see, all these institutions unfortunately are losing credibility. Today, when the government of India agencies take action against somebody, people think twice. Is it vendetta? Is it just character assassination or is it actually true? So when you lose faith in the functioning of a constitutional or a, or a or independent agency, that's not good for the country. Unfortunately, blatant open misuse of the agencies for so long has tarnished the entire credibility of the organization. And I worry about that. But I can tell you, now that we have a larger strength in parliament, it will not be as it was last 10 years. We will take them to task. We will fight legally, we will fight in parliament and on the streets against misuse. Using is fine, but misusing is misusing it against your political opponents, that's not acceptable. Coming to the question of one nation, one world, what is your take on that? What, what is this one nation, one election? You can't, there were elections supposed to be in Maharashtra, Jharkhand along with Haryana and Jammu Kashmir. They could not do it. Why could not they do it? There are 10 UP uh, bipoles pending, se 7 in uh, Rajasthan, that they are not doing. So this, they keep throwing these balloons, boogies in the air to keep people confused and attention diverted. So how is it possible, tell me, you need a certain number of members of parliament to pass this constitutional amendment. They don't have the numbers, first of all. Second of all, how can you have elections and all, supposing there's a midterm election in one state or a government falls, what happens then? It's a very complicated and a an issue which BJP is putting itself because they don't want to answer questions. Why is a gas cylinder selling for 1,000 rupees? They don't want to answer those questions. So they keep putting these things in the air so people get diverted. I don't think it's practical and I don't think it will happen. Uh, I think even the allies of the BJP, uh, Mr. Nitesh Kumar and Mr. Naidu, they may not be in sync with this proposal. Congress in Haryana failed to strike a deal with AAP. And January, February, the, the, the Delhi election is coming. Have you missed the bus there? No, I think, make it very clear, the India Alliance was a national alliance formed for the Lok Sabha elections and it is as it is. There is no change in the India Alliance. In some states, we are able to have alliances like in Maharashtra. In some states, we are having a partial alliance like in Kashmir. Uh, PDP is a part of India Alliance but in the assembly polls, we had an alliance with National, Con national Conference. That was partial alliance. In Haryana, unfortunately, we did try but there was not meeting of minds, there was local pressures from different districts and we were not able to get an alliance. But that does not mean that there is any question on the National India Alliance. We are as we are, stronger than before and we will be a formidable force to reckon with as an opposition. But in certain states, we have to take local considerations of that party and our own local units. But in case of Delhi, what I'm basically asking was Delhi is going to poll January in February. Will it not affect the prospect of both the parties? But I think it's very early. We don't know when the polls will be announced, uh, even though the Delhi government has asked for pre uh, polls to happen. But whether the election commission does it or not, it's an open question. And it's way too early to start talking about Delhi elections right now. Thank you for being uh, frank and honest. Let's, let's get some rapid fire round. These are small. You have the answer of an option of yes or no, or you can pass it in also. And it's a mix, not that politics. Okay. Viv Richards or Virat Kohli? Oh, Viv Richards. I mean, I like Virat also, but uh, when I was growing up, King Viv is Richards king. was a guy. Sorry? King is always a king. Viv Richards, yes. It's my favorite also, Viv Richards. This is the next day political googly, Jaipur or Delhi? Uh, without a doubt, Jaipur. Modi or Sa? Narendra Modi or Amit Shah? For what? <laughs> For Prime Minister or as opponent, what? Neither. <laughs> Monica Balunsi or Aishwarya Rai? Huh, say it again. Monica Balunsi or Aishwarya Rai? Monica, Italian actress. Mamta Batterji. <laughs> what is the answer? <laughs> Monica Balunsi, the Italian actress, or Aishwarya Rai? Neither, thank you. You're playing safe. Huh? You're playing still safe. No, I'm being honest <laughs> with you, so. Dal bati churma or lal mach? Dal bati. That's easy. Tirupati laddu or Ajudha prasad? <laughs> if they're both handled carefully, both are okay. <laughs> Don't mess with the god. <laughs> Priyanka or Rahul? Both. Ah. Look, I've worked with both and I'm telling you just as an aside, Mr. Gandhi became member of parliament in 2004 when we all entered parliament. So I've had 
20 years of working with him. And last 10 years, uh, Priyanka Gandhi has been involved in the party's general secretary. I'm also general secretary. So I have, we have a good working relations. And I think they both uh, work as a team. And they fill up the gaps that are required to be filled. So that's why it's a, it's a solid team that they work as together. Book or web series? Book or web series? Uh, websites. I think I'm not that avid a reader. So. Power or principle? Principle, I think. That's a tough one again, but I'm being <laughs> honest here. So. Leadership by example or by charisma? Example. Always by example. That's uh, Twitter or Instagram? <sighs> Twitter. I mean, it's X now, right? It's called X. It's not called Twitter anymore. So your question is wrong, basically. <laughs> <laughs> Power dressing or casual wear? Casual wear, I think. Last one. You know, by, by the way, this kurta pajama is a fantastic dress. Absolutely. Because you can go to a wedding, you can play a kabaddi match, you can be casual, informal, everything. So it's, it works everywhere. In your case, everything goes well. <laughs> Last one. Defending policies or defending goals? Defining? Defending policies or defending goals? Uh, Goals, I think, that's far more important because anybody can make a policy, but how to get to that goal is more important. First question to Saddam Hussein. And his question can be picked or can be shown in the screen also. Saddam Hussein. Beautiful name, sir. Thank you, sir. Hello, sir. As you have said that you are working in Rajasthan for past 11 years. So is the people of Rajasthan is going to see you as the next chief minister? See, now we are in the election in Haryana. Let's worry about that one. But <laughs> Rajasthan elections are four years from today. It's very early to say what will happen, but I can tell you today that um, the Congress party is much stronger uh, than, than ever before, and uh, we'll get a good majority in four years' time. Uh, as to who will do what job, it's very early to say, but all of us are committed to making sure that we win the election. That's more important. First win, after that, let's see what happens. Mohammed Samim Husseini. That's a very interesting question. Where are you? If you want to join a BJP, then what will be the things that influence you? You can not uh, say no, it not, no. I didn't get a question, but I think what I'm reading here. You see, many people change this parties. This is the question. This is many the people question. change parties, and uh, it depends on the individual, right? Uh, how you function in an ecosystem, what you believe in principally. Are you happy in what you do? You can get a job, you know, whether you work X company or Y company. It's what makes you comfortable and what your calling is. If you feel attracted to the basics of where you are, you'll be happy. There'll always be questions, there'll always be other configurations, but I think for myself, I can tell you for the last 22, 23 years, I've been working in the Congress party, and I believe that <laughs> since a very young age, I believed in what we stand for. And uh, I'm not saying that all other parties are all bad, but the Congress for me is one party that actually stands for what I believe is important for this country. And of course, their policies, they're good and bad. Sometimes even we as uh, Congress may have made mistakes, but largely uh, an umbrella that everybody can come under that is not biased toward or against particular individuals or regions or communities or religion. That's what India stands. Our ethos is that we are strong, secular, country for thousands of years have lived with peace and brotherhood. Congress reflects that. Uh, maybe some other parties do, but I believe that's one party that truly reflects all of India. And that's why I think it's special and that's why I'm in for the last 25 years. Thank you very much. That's what the uh, uh, time limit is that. And thank you all the question and thank you for being an honest Thank you very much. Thank, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.